I'm Jerry, and today we're going to achieve quantum immortality, brother. A regular unemployed person will help us with this. The Many Worlds interpretation states that the universe splits into many parallel worlds in a quantum event. And if the observer determines the superpositions while conscious, perhaps he chooses one of the branches in reality in which consciousness exists, brother. If consciousness is a continuous process of interacting with the world, then in fatal situations, there will be branches of reality in which consciousness is preserved. Confused, brother? It's like an autosave in a game. After death, your consciousness transfers to a new reality and avoids the mistakes of the previous version. And if you believe my hypothesis, the unemployed guy won't blow into pieces when I press this button, but will move to a reality where this didn't happen. Three, two, one. Oops, oh, looks like we need a new test subject. Three, two, one. What? Broken? Ah, oh, stupid technology. Or does it mean that the unemployed guy's consciousness moved to this reality? Yes, yes, I'm a genius. You surely know about the superposition of electrons, where an electron exists in multiple states simultaneously. Only when an observer appears does the electron choose one specific state. What if our consciousness is determined by the superposition of electrons in the neurons of our brain? This means that outside our space, an observer determines the superposition in our world. After the brain's death, the observer moves to another space with different physical parameters. You can call it a soul if you want. So, if we learn to preserve the superpositions of electrons in the brain, even after death, we can achieve quantum immortality. Yes, baby, we are on the brink of the greatest discovery. We just need to figure out how to preserve the memory from the brain's neurons. If you know of any, let me know. I'm going to search for cancer in myself. Modern technologies detect cancer too late in 40% of cases, so I need more accurate information, bro. For this, I'm using quantum dots, synthetic semiconductor crystals just a few nanometers in size. They are so small that they even have quantum properties, and they can also be modified by attaching molecules that bind to cancer cells. In simpler terms, quantum dots can enter the bloodstream, circulate through the body, and find cancer cells. And there's a match! With the help of fluorescent tomography, you can determine where the dots have accumulated. Wow, my tumor is shaped like Russia! Quantum dots can even transport chemotherapy drugs directly to the cancerous cells. This is more effective than conventional chemotherapy because it increases the concentration of drugs in the tumor and minimizes damage to healthy cells. Jerry 1, Cancer 0. There's a theory that the human brain uses quantum processes, so Ronald and I have placed entangled particles in our brains. These are quantum objects whose properties are linked even over large distances. Creating and embedding them in the brain is insanely difficult. If you want to know more about it, let me know in the comments, bro. But back to telepathy. Hypothetically, quantum processes in one brain, using entangled particles, could be transmitted to another. Ronald has now gone to another part of the city, and I can feel what he's feeling. Though it's only limited to emotions. It's not possible to read thoughts or communicate this way, bro. However, I know exactly what Ronald is experiencing, even though he's several kilometers away. Right now, he's having fun. He's laughing. He Ouch! Oh, what pain! Oh, Ronald's been shot! Ouch! Oh, why didn't we figure out how to turn this thing off? Oh, damn, it hurts so much! Looks like they're up to something again. Hey, are you guys gonna try and make someone immortal? Whoa, who is this? I'm guessing this guy has no idea what loneliness is. I think we found just the guy you're looking for. I can't wait to find out how you're gonna make him immortal. Transplanting Voorhees DNA into the handsome dude is a great idea. From a biological standpoint, you can make a person immortal. To achieve this, you simply need to remove from the DNA the propensity to age and suffer from disease. But today, Snot and Gob are trying to figure out how can you kill something that's immortal. The first test is teleportation. To move an object from point A to point B, you need to move all the atoms and neural connections exactly as they were in the original. After that, the original has to be destroyed, with only the perfect copy remaining. Therefore, theoretically, teleportation kills both a mortal and an immortal. Hmm.
I was expecting a slightly different result, but it's much too early to give up. Here we have an alkaline bath that can dissolve any living creature. It's a shame these aliens didn't watch Breaking Bad, because after all, then they know that alkali will dissolve a bathtub faster than a human body. I think the next test is gonna kill you for sure, handsome dude. It's gonna start by destroying your brain. No one on this planet can endure something like this for more than a day. You're still alive! Okay. Lucky for us, Snot and Gob just so happened to steal this huge meat grinder yesterday. What are we waiting for? The meat grinder ain't gonna turn itself on. He seems to have lost his memory. More precisely, all his neural connections have been destroyed, and his mind is like a pure white sheet. In some way, we've killed him. And what shall we do with that now? I don't know, but it'll be something interesting. Uh... Wait a minute. Why would you want to kill an immortal? Uh... Ah, you want to get rid of me and take over my show. Damn, he's on to us. Time to slip away. It's okay. We'll create our own show. And then we're going to be great. Get out. I'm sorry, dude. I didn't even ask your name. Oh, Arnold. Nice to meet you. Arnold, wait. God knows what might be in this magic shop. Well, since you successfully solved your Mexican food problem, let's go have some fun. What a huge line. It looks like you'll have to wait for a bit. Or, Arnold, this is not a good thing to do. Looks like this cute little granny needs your help. Arnold, watch out! You know, Arnold, I decided to go to the morgue and say my final goodbyes to you. Oh my god, are you alive? No, you've been resurrected! It seems that the elixir you drank worked. You are now immortal. Congratulations, Arnold. You will now be the longest living organism on Earth. Your body is now regenerating, and the term cellular senescence is now just a joke for you. Well, how are you gonna use your immortality? Got it, you'll cross the road on red. Grope random girls. You'll also win the Kenny McCormick lookalike contest. That's ridiculous. You have an infinite number of years ahead of you, and you waste them on this? Arnold, you could study everything in the world. Learn any martial art. And even go explore and colonize new galaxies. Arnold, how about maybe stop wasting your time? Okay, so maybe for 200 years, you're gonna binge watch every single Netflix series. I see you got a little bored. Plus, your house has started to decay, and you're still young. One of the disadvantages of immortality is that you have to outlive all your loved ones. In addition, the world around you is changing rapidly. But you will lag behind in progress, and you will feel superfluous in society. Everything that was once important to you will gradually disappear. Over time, everything will cease to please and surprise you at all, because you've already seen everything. You will become deeply depressed. Sorry, friend, but it's no use. Stop it, Arnold. You know you're immortal. Arnold, let's go watch the show. Arnold. Okay, I'll leave you alone.
Oh, Arnold, you came back just in time. The sun is dying and turning into a supernova, and you got the best seat to see the death of our solar system. Say goodbye to planet Earth. I guess that burrito was a mistake. In 2011, Dutch scientists created a goat that could produce material for spider webs in its milk, and then they turned that stuff into human skin. This skin is 15 times stronger than steel, and it can stop 5.56 caliber bullets. The study officially ended. But what if the experiments continued in secret? Congratulations, Arnold. You just volunteered for the bulletproof skin test. Wow. You still alive, Superman? So, a successful test. Hey, Arnie, these guys seem pretty happy with the outcome, but they want to up the ante. A grenade launcher fires a grenade from its barrel at a speed of 120 meters per second, and it can pierce 50 centimeters of steel armor. Now we need something more serious. For example, skin made from fullerene. This is the strongest material known to science, an allotrope of carbon, and it's 200 times stronger than the strongest steel. Congratulations, Arnie. Your fullerene skin can withstand a rocket-propelled grenade, which, of course, cannot be said about your brain. The shockwave has turned it into jiggly jelly. But luckily, you're in a super-secret lab. That's right, Arnold. Perfect time to get away. After all, now automatic weapons can't hurt you. In fact, you can't be strangled. And even getting hit by a car won't hurt you. But your strength, Arnie, you little wimp, that hasn't changed a bit. But instead, as I can see, now you've got nerves of steel. But the problem is, Arnold, now you have to hide for the rest of your life so that no one knows that you've got super skin. Wait, what? I see, Arnie. You'll do anything for likes. Well, each his own. Don't worry, Arnold. They'll let you go if you answer correctly. So, guess what's in the picture? Wrong! And on this one. No! Get it together, man! Such experiments were carried out in the 1950s in the USA. Their goal was to develop paranormal abilities in soldiers in order to gain an advantage in the Cold War. The test subjects were given LSD, since LSD significantly increases the activity of neural connections. Arnold, pull yourself together already. Even a rat learns faster than that. Well, true, this ain't no ordinary rat. He has a chip in his brain. Scientists proved the possibility of transmitting nerve impulses from a distance back in 2013. The rats were in different cities, but they acted together, thanks to electrodes implanted in their brains and the internet. It looks like Elon Musk is going to try all the different ways to develop telepathy on you at the same time. Arnold, stop! You haven't mastered your new skills yet, buddy. Mind reading has many benefits. Now, people can't hide anything from you. But I have to warn you, you won't like everything they think about. The pros in a relationship, you can immediately know if your partner really loves you or not. You can understand the language of animals, and you can find your perfect match. But what if all people could read each other's minds? An ideal world without lies or falsehood. Or maybe not. Hey, mister, don't be offended if he thought your nose is too pimply. Gosh darn it, this is a disaster. No, Arnie, stop. Don't even think about it. All the best special forces in the world are after you. MI6, British intelligence, which has been working around the clock for 100 years straight. ISI, Pakistan's Interdepartmental Intelligence Agency, with the largest residency in the world, 10,000 agents. The CIA, watch out Arnie, they torture people. The Canadian Intelligence Service, with a search budget of over $507 million. Do you really think you can hide from all of them? You're on every single smartphone in social media. You become more popular than Greta Thunberg. 
I'm sure she envies you now. After all, you can actually help save humanity. Just give them your blood, all the way down to the last drop. Elite special forces from all countries are already coming for you. U.S. Navy SEALs, the French National Gendarmerie, Chinese Snow Leopards. But of course, even a random student could catch you.